Two chains. What's up? What's up? Welcome to Most Expensive Bits, and I'm your host, Titty Two Chains. That's right. Today we hanging out in Napa Valley. If you haven't been to a vineyard before, you haven't really lived life. We'll be hanging out with my man Will at the Promontory. How much was something like this run your rich ass daddy? Secondly, we'll be hanging out with the people at Rito who have the best decanters in the world. Get ready to pour your heart out. It's very, you're, you look very good. And last but not least, been rich all your life off tea. Yes. <laughs> this is the most expensive it's off the vine. Let's live it up. Yeah. That was good? Great. Good. Didn't seem that good. <laughs> Two chains. Will. Nice to meet you, Will. How are you? This place is freaking beautiful, man. Thank you. Tell me more about your place. Yeah, so this is a project that we got started on about 10 years ago, but we've been working on buying this property for over 30 years. You've been, you've been eyeing a property for 30 years? Yeah, it wasn't until 2008 with the downturn of the economy that we heard that this property was coming on the market, and we... Uh, and the rest is history. Yeah, more or less. The land is the most important thing that you can have. So we actually have all three geologic formations that are on planet Earth, sedimentary, volcanic, and metamorphic, all in one place. Each geologic formation brings something different out in the wine. So tell me what the experience here is like. What does it cost if someone wants to come out here, go on a tour, enjoy some of your most expensive wine? It's $200 a person for a tasting. OK. Now, do you allow people to um, help with the making of that process? Like, you know, I heard about being able to step on grapes and stuff like that. Is that possible or anywhere around here? Do you know? Stop. Oh, 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 I can't breathe. Oh, 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 oh. We don't do it here. I but... got a pedicure for now. <laughs> so it's $200 a person, and you take walk-ins? Anybody can come, or do you have to reserve it's, this? It's by appointment. In general, it's about a two-year wait if, if you're interested in buying. What do you mean? We don't make very much. What do you mean? Look at this. What are you doing if you're not making wine? I'm confused. We sell out of it pretty quickly, and we have a wait list. And I want to skip the line on that two-year wait. I think we can do something about that. I think we can. <laughs> All right. My man, Will, I have to know, how much was something like this place, this facility? What would this run your rich-ass daddy? You know, the, the land in Napa Valley is not inexpensive. You know, you can make wine and not own the land. You can even produce a wine and not have a winery. The soil is, is one of the most important things. We have nice warm days, but then really cool evenings. You know, I actually never thought I was going to be in the family business. That, uh, that, so we, uh, we try and be strategic about the, the way that we invest in property. So it's a pretty unique spot. He went to college, actually, in Berkeley, an incredible community. We really only make one wine. I can't get into hard numbers, but if you look up what 80 acres of really good vineyard land in that valley comes out to. I already looked it up. It's roughly between 80 and $150 million. So get a load of that, rappers. Yeah, I hear rapping, drinking liquor. They make fun of me. I, be, I have red wine come to my section with the sparkles and everything. <laughs> Want to check it out? Yeah, let's go on a little little tour. After you. All right. OK, so so we're here. This is where uh, you know most of the magic happens, right? So tell me what you got in these jugs, containers. We have a few different tanks here. So this oh. is where all the fermentation happens. So you know, sugar and alcohol, this is where all really the magic happens. See, I want to know, how do you make wine? So basically, you know, harvest happens from early September all the way to, you know, late October. Over that time, we pick different parts of the vineyard that are at different levels of, of ripeness. We bring in the fruit, we do hand sorting for all of the, the clusters, and then we have a, uh, a special machine that kind of helps pick off the berries from the, uh, the stems themselves. Once that happens, we do another round of hand kind of selection. So we almost go like berry by berry, figuring out which are the right ones to include in, you know, in the tanks. How long does it take for a ripe grape to fully ferment? We can have to three weeks. Oh, the... really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's kind of quick, right? Yeah. OK. And then the wine goes downstairs for all the aging. That's where like all the really the interesting parts happen. Downstairs. Yeah. That's where the magic happens. Yeah. 
So when my dad was alive, he used to do this thing called uh, cone liquor, if you ever heard of that. It's this country slang. So he takes like an old milk jug, and when it's over, it cleans it out, fills it up with peaches, sits it in the garage for a whole year, and then pulls it out the next Christmas. Yeah, and a lot of people just be drunk and talking crazy, but I, I guess we got a similar process. We just use the garage instead of... Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Oh, so we're right here. We're at the fermentation place where most of the magic happens. My next and last question in here is, when do you guys get involved? Most of the impact that we have on the character of the wine happens even before it gets here. I got you. Now, we've heard different things about um, red wine. Can you give us a fact check on some of these things being, you know, good for <laughs> blood? I think wine in general uh, is probably is probably better for the soul than anything. Oh, good <laughs> answer. Baby, it's better for the soul. That's all you need to know. Now drink it. So what's next? Well, I think it's time to maybe check out some of the wines. Let's do it. I wanted to show something that is still going through its evolution. Now that you showed me around this huge place, it's time for the cherry on top. What we got here? I chose three vintages. The 2009, which was our first release ever. The 2012, which is our current release. And the 2016, which will be released in 2021. So another few years. So you still keep some of the 2009? You still have a, a lot of 2009 laying around? We don't have a lot, but we try and keep enough back so that we can show people how we started and then how we're going Evolving. in the future. Dope. Exactly. Well, let's get to it. All right. This is the 2009. 2009. Okay. That's right. You gotta look at the legs. <laughs> Teach them about the you legs. You know, you yeah, know. You about the legs. <laughs> I like to check out the legs on mine, see? Oh, yeah. Ooh. This wine is just starting to come into its, uh, into its rhythm. So how much would a bottle of that be? Yeah, so, you know, the way we think about it, like, we have this piece of land. There are certain parts of each one of them that I hold pretty close. An investment in this bottle is going to be very different today. The U.S. currency, et cetera. Turkeys love gr grapes. Yeah, they're, they're the worst. We like to taste oldest to youngest. Coyotes and the mountain lions love turkeys. So how much would a bottle of that be? $900 a bottle. What you got next? We have the 2012, which is our current release. So that's what you could maybe find out at a restaurant or something like that. OK. This is, this is out right now. And what's the price of this? So this, uh, we started this at about um, So it's kind of a symbiotic thing that we got going on there. <laughs> Very wild. The family of bears that we've been tracking for years, that night vision. How much would a bottle of that be? $450 a bottle. Nowadays, it's about $750, so it's already appreciated quite a bit, even in just a few short years. Let me try this one, maybe, and let's see if we can get, let me see if I can. Yeah, that's way. OK. They can tell you some things that are harder to just to discern kind of just from smelling or tasting. I do like that. And these grapes come from out there in the backyard. Yeah. Yeah, you know, we have this property that's in the center of basically a forest. It's completely surrounded. It's very wild. We've got everything from bears, mountain lions, coyotes, wanna... deer. Like, we have everything. Right really, bro? And we have these motion sensing wildlife cameras. We've had the family of bears that we've been tracking for years. You have footage of them? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Will you show them to me? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> what you got, Nick? So finally, I wanted to show something that is still going through its evolution. It's still got plenty of time that it's got to spend in the casks. And this is the 2016. 2016.
Yes, sir. Ooh. Well, I tell you what, I'm floored. I'm interested. Me and you can continue drinking more red wine. And uh, thank you guys for checking us out. We are at the Promontory. We're live, Napa Valley, where all the rich people kick it at. We drink our wine different from the way you drink your wine. So, um, you know, just catch up. Hey, how you doing? Good, how are you two, Chains? All right, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too, I've been very excited. So, Riedel Crystal is the company. We're 11 generations strong and 262 years in business. Speaking to the senses is what we're really trying to do here. So you have the Super Leggero collection, Super Leggero meaning super light. Can I show you these glasses? Definitely, I want to Perfect. see Perfect, so this is the Burgundy Grand Cru glass. And this has actually been developed, please, over the past three generations. The stem and the base are purely for aesthetics. So we're really gonna be focused okay. on this very large bowl. Okay. So we have a Pinot Noir here. And again, I'm just pouring about a couple of ounces, not to its full capacity, not even halfway. So I tell people you can kind of yeah, swirl mine. it on the base, and then when you feel comfortable, you can kind of helicopter up. Okay. Yeah, so it's all like, you know, based on your comfort level. Mine. We're just gonna put the rim of the glass right on our upper lip and just dive in and breathe, smell in deeply. And you get a lot of beautiful red fruit. Very characteristic of Pinot Noir. You get a lot of great spicy notes as well. And this is the It's all about the direction of the flow onto the palate. We're trying to direct the flow intentionally to the front part of our palate. And notice that you're almost kissing the glass. <laughs> How much would uh, a set of these glasses cost? They're $100 per piece. Yeah. But the bottle of wine we're consuming is probably about $100 as well. So generally we say, spend on a glass what you would on a bottle of wine. Yeah, a little bit more pursed. Maybe there needs to they be... They gonna make it make noise. Yeah, of course. Of on the course. TV, they gonna make it sound and good. And it can be but... played with or without wine in it. <laughs> These poor winemakers, they don't have any control over what you put their beautiful wines in. You. In music, if you could have the greatest music, but if you have a bad speaker, exactly. it's terrible. So we uh. create tools that are loudspeakers for wine that speak to all of your senses. Ready for sound? Yeah. Okay, so when we toast, it's belly to belly. Whoa. Now put it to your ear. That's Isn't cool. that crazy? One okay. more time. One okay. more time. Absolutely. <laughs> Typically, the wines, if they're a little bit more dense and a little bit more, a little higher in alcohol, um, they tend to have a little slower stream of legs. That's what it means. The slower Vers stream means more alcohol. Yes, generally speaking, and viscosity in the wine. Wine is serious. This is it deep. It is serious. But this it's is so not, fun. This is deep. Oh my it's God. It's so fun. And when you mix the glassware in, like it takes it to a whole new level. We have these amazing pieces in front of us here, these decanters. Yes. And they're all hand blown. They look like animals. Like this could be a snake, a duck, or. Exactly. And our owner, 11th generation Maximilian Riedel, he is responsible for these designs. This was one of his very first designs. So we poured into the decanter. It's cool, right? Following this nice long look at journey that. down the neck of the decanter. It's beautiful to look at, right? How much do these be costing like this? How, how much this cost? So right? this is also handmade. If it's handmade, if it has gold on it, it's about to be a, a pretty nice ticket. So, Dollar signs, yes. So this is about $500. OK. It comes with a DVD that shows you how to use the decanter as well. Because what would happen? If you try to use the decanter, pour your friend or your father a glass of wine, and nothing comes out. So, oh, you got originally they thought maybe a design flaw. No, it's genius. By turning the decanter, you charge the wine. Do you hear that? 
You charge the wine, you push pure oxygen into the wine, and then load the second chamber. So there's two chambers in this decanter. <laughs> You're then preloading a it's pour crazy. of a few ounces, which is a perfect pour. That's what load in there, a perfect pour? Yep. That's cool. Do you want to try it? Hell yeah. OK. I got to full load it. You got to full load it. Beautiful. That's it. I See, it's love easy. this. It's easy. So, OK. What is decanting? What is, I mean, what is that? So it's actually going to soften the tannins in wine. Okay. So it's going to make it a little bit softer, a little bit more pleasant. Um, it also kind of releases that caged up CO2 that's been hanging out in the bottle. 10-4. This is Mamba. And Mamba also has two chambers. You put the wine into the decanter, obviously, here. And then you push the wine into the back part of the decanter. And then you drop it, kind of like it's hot. Go, air. All right, last but not least, how much Absolutely. is this big sucker right here? That is a $2,000 decanter. That's $2,000. $2,000. This is like the bomb diggity decanter. This is for the big parties. You're bringing out the big three liter bottles of wine. Other way. Exactly. Yep. It's very, you're, you look very good with this decanter. This one you can play. This you can blow it. You can, yeah, you can blow. You can blow this? Yeah. It comes with a DVD. Yeah, a little bit more pursed. Maybe there needs to They're be... gonna make it make noise. Yeah, of course. Of on the course. TV, they're gonna make it sound and good. And it can be I'm... played with or without wine in it, which is really cool. It's kind of a fun feature. So when it's had wine in it, it has a little different tone. Not quite. Very nice. And, and how much is this one? This one is $600. I don't know which one I want. I know, it's so difficult, right? So many choices. I like this. And if you, I know you like Cabernet, so this is a perfect decanter I'm a Cabernet. For Cabernet. I knew we can do it. We're with Miss Anne, and she's very well versed and educated on glass, wine, all of the above. I'm happy to be here. You should be too. True. These all come loose leaf, and I just used a, used a filter to make them. What you mean? What, what do you mean? What do I mean? How you doing? Good. It's nice to meet you. I'm Two Shades. I'm Bianca. Nice to meet you, Bianca. What you got going on here? We have wine-inspired teas. So I brought four for you to try. Wine and tea mixed? Yes. No, 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 not mixed. Um, these teas are just flavored with wine flavors. So we have a few uh, different kinds. Some of them are Cabernet flavored, Merlot, and one Champagne flavored. But they're actually teas. They're actually teas. So there's no alcohol whatsoever. Where'd you get that idea from? Uh, it was actually my parents. They're very creative. They are? Yes. And so how's the business doing? The business is doing really well. I mean, we have over uh, 300 teas in our tea rooms. Which one do you prefer? What's your favorite? Um, my favorite is this one, which is called the White Champagne Raspberry. Um, and it does have a hint of that champagne flavor. Does it have to be served warm, or you can have this, you know, chilled? You can have all of these uh, chilled, and they actually go really well. They really make great iced teas as well. Next question. How much would something like this cost if somebody wanted like a, a Cabernet tea? So that this, doesn't get them tipsy. That doesn't get them tipsy. They're actually, you're looking at about $14 an ounce. 28 ounces, 28 grams in an ounce. Yes. And then 16 ounces in a pound. Four ounces in a quarter pound. Eight ounces and a half a pound at 16. You're right. Y'all rich, huh? <laughs> you, how long they been? How long your parents been making tea? Um, 25 years. For real. For real. Yes. Been rich all your life off tea. Yes. <laughs> Next question. What's this one? This is an Assam Jungle Cabernet. 
So what the tea comes from the uh, Assam jungles in India. Like for real, for real. For real, for real. Who went and got it? Um, well, my dad actually. <laughs> He's really? been there a few times, and he went goes and picks out the tea. I want to try that. Sounds good. Fourteen dollars an ounce. Fourteen dollars an ounce. It's got a nice little, like a honey smell to yeah, it. Yeah, it does. It's not gonna get me drunk. No, it's not gonna get you drunk. I've been getting tipsy all day today. <laughs> well, this is a good uh, after drinking kind of. Ooh, it got a little hit to it. <laughs> yeah, it does. So the Assam uh, tea actually has a malty flavor, which goes really well uh, with the Cabernet. This is good. It is. I like it. <laughs> yeah, I like this. So what's the process? The same thing. Do you, is it no, no tea bags? What, how do you do this? No, so I actually, these all come loose leaf, and I just use a, used a filter to make them. And then just three minutes with some hot water, and you're good to go. What do you mean? What, what do you mean? What do I mean? Next question. Let me try one more. All right. Well, we've got the white champagne raspberry. Uh, we have a pink Sonoma, which has got rose petals and jasmine flavor. I'm going to get this and you drink that. OK, sounds good to me. Cheers. How do you this like is, it? No, this is good. I, like, good. I, like, I might like this one even better. Oh, yeah? Yeah, because I tasted the jasmine. Yeah, you can taste it. Yep. And the roses. Yes. This episode is called The Most Expensivest Off the Vine, where we've just been tasting, having taste tests, learning about different wines, vineyards, wineries, teas that have wine flavor. So I'm happy that you can come share this moment with me, Miss Bianca. Thank you. Happy to and, be here. And it's cool to know that people can get rich basically off any dream that they have as long as they pursue it. Oh.